praising God about right there. Come through a uh, 90 degree week, and uh, now we're now we're back to where it feels good outside. So I um, praise God for that. So, um, so good to have everybody in the house with us this morning. Let's let's lift our hands and let's uh, invite God into this atmosphere. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. God, thank you for all these amazing people that have come out, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray that you just begin to let your spirit fill this place, dear God. Jesus, I pray that we just take a back seat to what you're about to do in this place. God, we know that you, you have a work that needs to be done in here this morning. God, I pray that, that you would just let us put everything else beside, dear God, Jesus, and focus on you for this time that we have, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray that you would just give us courage, give us strength, dear Lord. And most of all, I pray that you are glorified in everything that we do and say here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You all worship with us as we sing an old one, I'll fly away. Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. If 
we ever needed the Lord before. We sure do need Him now. Oh, we sure do need Him now. We sure do need Him now. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. The Lord before we sure do need Him now. Oh, we sure do need Him now. Yes, now we sure do need Him now. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. We need Him every day and every hour. Well, if we ever Needed the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. We sure do need Him now. We sure do need Him now. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need Him now. We need Him every day. Yes, we need him, yes, we need him, 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 we
I uh, do have a few announcements that I want to go over. Um, first announcement, uh, coming up this Saturday, October the 12th, here at the church at 6 p.m., Brother Roger Williams is going to be here, and he's going to be putting on a, a healing conference. Um, this is uh, one of uh, Brother Jack's colleagues, and uh, Brother Jack's going to be here as well. So um, if, uh, if you could pencil that in on your calendar, uh, this Saturday, October the 12th, at 6 p.m. here at the church, uh, there's going to be a, a healing conference. Um, also, um, that following Sunday, next Sunday, October the 13th, uh, Brother Roger Williams will be preaching for us that Sunday as well. Um, so we, we look forward to that also. Um, and then on November the 4th, uh, as we announced uh, last week, we are going to have our trunk or treat here at the church. Um, very excited about that. Um, there's going to be hot dogs, chili, music, plenty of candy, and uh, hopefully plenty of kids. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to, to that, being able to, you know, see the community come through. And that's been a huge success the past two years that we've done that. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to being able to, to get to mingle with our community and, and let, our, let our kids know that we care about them. So I um, do have several prayer requests that we want to make mention of. Um, Brother Chris Streetman uh, could not be with us this morning. He's battling some sickness, um, and uh, that kind of went through Sister Kylie's whole family. Um, so I uh, want to pray pray for all of them as they you know continue to mend and and heal. Um, Brother Bradley tore his rotator cuff, uh, so we definitely want to remember Brother Bradley and uh, Sister Jenny as well <laughs> uh, as she uh, she helps Brother Bradley as he's in some pain. So. Um, want to continue to remember uh, Brother Landon Hagwood. Um, did get a good report back on him Friday that when they went and did the, uh, the other scans that they were going to do, that they did not find cancer anywhere else in his body. Um, so that is, that is good. That's uh, praise God for that. And so now they're formulating a plan to, to take out what is there. And, um, I'm praying for complete healing in his body. Um, continue to pray for his family um, as they go through that. It's good to see Sister Deborah in service with us this morning. Uh, have her back. Um, I know she's been some battling some some sickness and things, and um, I know a lot of us have. We we this sickness has been going through the the church rampantly, um, but it's good to ha have a full house of our family. Uh, here. So um, if you've got an unspoken prayer request, if you'll raise an uplifted hand and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you again for, for this morning, dear Lord. Thank you for, for all these people that have come, dear Lord Jesus. God, I, I pray that, that they didn't come to just hear the music this morning, dear God. They didn't pray to just hear the, the preaching this morning, but God, they came to experience you, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray that they came to, to get something, dear Lord, no matter what they've got going on, dear God, no matter what any of us have going on, whether it's it's healing that we need, dear Lord, we know that you have it for us this morning. God, I pray that you would just touch in each one of these prayer requests that we've mentioned this morning. God, you see each and every need, dear God. You see the heart's desire. Jesus, I just pray that you would just move in each and every situation. And God, I pray that you would just touch in our tithe and offering this morning, dear Lord. I pray that you would just break it. Bless it and multiply it for the use of your kingdom here at Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as the 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the
Then I see you standing near them, shining with compassion in your eyes. In your eyes, day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your love shine through me. Show me what I've never seen. Lord, I want to be a witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was blind. was grace that told my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious is that grace
praise God, praise sing that together. with him would not be possible just the fact that he sent Jesus down on this earth God took a piece of himself and put it in the flesh that was grace and I'm so thankful for that grace this morning because because of that grace we can have eternal life and without that grace we could not it's just as simple as that so I'm th so thankful for His grace this morning. If our student ministries would like to be dismissed, they can. Again, so good to see everybody in the house this morning. Thank you, Ethan, for playing the trumpet on that song. I asked him if he would pick that up and play it, and uh, I just I love I love hearing that that trumpet. And um, you know the the trumpet that's something that we need to be familiar with because it's going to sound one day, and we're going to look up in the clouds, and that's where he'll be. But you know, it's not just us; everybody's going to see that. So I don't want to just hear it. I want to be called by it. I want to be called by that trumpet. I want to be called by Him up to meet Him. Everybody's going to know what's going on, but I want to be one of the chosen few. That's what I want to be. So y'all can sit with me this morning if y'all would like to. Well, actually, I'm not going to sit, so y'all don't sit with me. Just, just have a seat. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm sure by now y'all know that I like, I like group participation. So I'm going to ask y'all a few questions this morning, and I want you to be honest with me, okay? I always like honesty. And the um, big thing is be, be honest with yourself this morning. Because that's, that's where it all starts. If you're not honest with yourself, then you're not going to be honest with others. You know, that's, it is what it is. Um, 
I've heard the saying my whole life that, you know, some people, they tell a lie for so long that they actually believe it's true. But that doesn't change the fact that it's a lie. So, still a lie. So, so be honest with yourself this morning. So, my question, I got a couple questions. My first question is, how many of you would like to change something about yourself if you could? All right, good. We got some good participation on that. Now, this next one, somebody, somebody might laugh, but I truly want you to be honest. How many of you would like to change something about somebody else if you could? Casey raised her hand. I'm making sure. <laughs> so, we would all like to change something about ourselves. But there's also other people that, that we would like to see changed as well. And, and some of you might think, well, you know, I kind of feel bad for raising my hand because, you know, that, that, that might make me, you know, seem judgmental or, you know, different things like that. And you don't have to feel like that this morning, okay? You're not, you're not always in a mindset of judgment when you look at some, somebody and wish that there was a change in their life. Because you know what? A lot of times, that's how we know that we need to go minister to people, that we need to reach out for people, is that we see people that are hurting. We see people that are they're living in depression or addiction or all these different things, things that they need change from. Okay, so you don't have to feel bad about looking at somebody and saying, you know what, I, I wish that could change. I'm sure that we've probably got friends or family members that are going through those same exact things that I talked about this morning that are, that are battling addiction. They're battling depression. You know, maybe they're, they're going through a season in their life that, you know, you wish that it could change. And that's all, that's all good. We all want to better ourselves and the ones around us. We want to see people I hope you do. I hope you want to see different people succeed. All right? You know, I, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go by myself. I want to see people go with me, you know? If I, if I went up there by myself, you know, that would be pretty, pretty bad. But sometimes you wonder about, you know, the way that even the so-called Christians, the way that we, we treat our own, you kind of wonder, you know, do you, do you really want to help people? Do you want to see a positive change in somebody's life? And I do. And I know that y'all do too. Because I've, I've seen that in this church. I love our community outreach program that Sister Julie Wade, Sister Julie's battling some sickness. But I love, you know, that, that we've got that here implemented in this church because we want to see people live a better life. We want to see people have things that, that they don't have. We don't want to see people go without. And those are all things that are important. The problem is, okay, speaking of us seeing somebody else and wanting a change for them, is that we're not giving the things that we want to see changed in our life to the one who can truly change them. And speaking of those others, we tend to try to change them ourselves when God is the only one that can truly change anybody, whether it be us or them. So the real thing is, is that we've got to let God be God. All right? Now, we can let God move through us, and He's going to. He'll, he will work through you. But there are certain things that only God can do that I can't do. I can't, I can't just easily just take somebody and tell them, you know, you, know you, don't, you don't need to drink alcohol anymore because it's a problem, and bam, it's changed. It's done. It's not going to work like that. It's going to take a little bit more work. It's going to take God work. It is. We need to be leading people to Jesus. That's what we need to do. We need to learn to turn ourselves over into His hands, and then the other people that are struggling, we need to learn to lead them 
to him. All right. We can't we can't sit there and and try and nitpick them apart and try and and change them. We need to take them to the one who can change. And he'll do the changing. And I've said many times that you know we need to be reaching out to those that are lost. We do. We need to love them. We need to invite them into the house. And when we do that, that's when we're going to be on the right track. That's God's plan. Because you know what? And I, I said this last Sunday morning. When you can get them to come through those doors, then you can let God do the work. Get them through the doors and let God do the work from there. All right? That, it's as simple as that. If we want to see God, if you want to see God work in your life, we've got to start to put our life back in His hands. That's where our life belongs, is in His hands. 1 Peter 5 and 10, it says, Now the God of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will personally restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little. The dominion belongs to Him forever. Amen. I love the fact that that verse right there ends with the word Amen. Does anybody know what the meaning of the word Amen is? Like the literal meaning? The meaning of the word Amen is so be it. So what they are doing right there is when they end that verse with Amen, they are proclaiming, you know what? We've spoken this word and God's going to do it. So be it. It's going to happen. And I love the fact that we sang Amazing Grace right before this because every one of us have been lost before. Every one of us have been in a place to where we found ourselves searching. And the reason I know this is because we are born into sin. We are. And we have to come to a place to where we understand that we need a Savior. If you feel like you don't need a Savior, then you, you might not be on track. I need a Savior this morning. I need Jesus. I need His blood. I need His grace. I need it daily. I don't just need it, you know, from the hours of, you know, five to seven or something like that. I need God every minute, every second of every day. And I'm glad that we serve a God that is graceful. I'm glad that we serve a God that wants to personally restore and establish me and strengthen me and support me after the things that I've suffered through. So what I want to talk to you about this morning is the God of restoration. Because we do serve a God of restoration. God wants to fully restore you. But restoration isn't something that happens overnight. It's a process. You know, when, when you start to think about you know restoring, a lot of times I start to think about restoring a home or restoring a car. And when you're restoring these things, that process, it starts from the inside out. It starts from the inside out. Our human nature is to normally care more about what the outside looks like. I know a lot of times, especially when you know we've been doing some remodeling on somebody's home or something like that, you can be doing all this great stuff on the inside and the person's like, I can't wait till the outside looks good. And, and I'm like, you know, I would rather the inside be really nice. The place where I'm actually living at, I'd rather it be really nice. But their human nature is for when somebody drives down the road, they want it to look nice from the outside because they want people to look at that house and say, man, that's a, that's a good-looking home. You can look great on the outside, but if you're a mess on the inside, it's not good. That's, you need work. We need work. I need work. We have to start from the inside out. 
And this is why a lot of people who are out there that are, that are lost and they're searching for you know, a new life, that they can't find it because there are plenty of churches out there that they're more concerned about you know, how they dress or, or how they talk or how their hair is styled. But if God's truly going to change somebody, it has to start from that inside. If God isn't present on the outside, then He's not going to, excuse me, if He's not present on the inside, He's not going to shine through on the outside. So we've got to get our, get our inside right. God longs for us to seek restoration. And that's another thing is that we have to want to be restored. You've got to want it. You can't just, you know, sit there and expect God to just, you know, just come down and just fix everything. You've got to seek Him. You've got to pray about it. You've got to long for it. You've got to hunger and thirst after it. And we do. We need Him to come inside and cleanse us. Psalms 51 and 7, it says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And that's what we, we need. We need a purging from the inside. Now, I've actually, I've actually been praying praying that from, for probably about a year now that, that God purged me from the inside. And somebody might think, you know, well, that sounds kind of weird. Well, you know, I've got a lot of stuff inside me that needs to be fixed. Okay, some in, internal stuff. Yeah, I've got plenty of outside stuff that needs to be fixed too. You know, but I've got to fix what's going on on the inside of me. And, and the thing is, is I can look at all y'all this morning. Y'all are a good-looking group. Y'all look amazing. Give, give yourselves a hand. Go on, give yourselves a hand. Y'all look good. But you know what? I can't look at you and tell what's going on on the inside. I can't. Some of y'all this morning might be sitting in that pew and you might be grasping at the pew because you know what you're battling. You know what you're going through. You know something that you've lost. You know something that you're struggling with that you need God to come work in. And I can't see it, but God can. And He can restore it, but you've got to turn it over to Him. That word in Psalms 51 and 7, hyssop. Hyssop, when I looked it up, it comes from the, uh, the mint family. And I really liked that when I read it because I love mint. I love chewing spearmint gum. And when I, when I first read that definition, the first thing that I thought of was toothpaste. Mint toothpaste. And mint is something that you see in a lot of toothpaste. And I got to thinking about the fact that, you know, when you brush your teeth, you're scrubbing away all the things that have, you know, accumulated in your mouth, you know, from, from eating and, you know, different things that you've, you know, I mean, just, and a lot of times, you know, just from me talking, just like up here this morning, you know, my mouth will get dry and I'm, you know, I probably need to go brush my teeth or something like that. So you're scrubbing away all the things that don't need to be there so that your teeth, your gums, and your breath can be restored. Did everybody brush their teeth this morning? Do a little hand check. I do that from time to time at work to make sure that you know I, I don't need a piece of gum or something like that. But when I thought about that, that scrubbing away, I got to thinking about, you know, I've, I've got some things that, that I need God to scrub away from me. I've got some things that I need removed so He can come in and He can fully restore me to where I need to be in order to be used by Him and to be used properly. Because I've said this before, 
Nobody wants to drink out of a dirty cup. I don't know if y'all are like me, but I can see one little speck of something floating around in some drink out of a cup, and I'm like, done. Just one little speck. And, and, and I don't want it anymore. But I'm glad that I serve a God that, you know what, he'll take, he'll take and he'll cleanse me. He'll scrub it away. He'll take the time to do that. Now, since he's not here this morning, I get to talk about him, which I talk about him when he's here anyways. My dad, he's got a car. And if anybody has ever been over to our house before, I'm sure you've seen the car. I know Brother Buzz and Sister Patty know exactly what I'm talking about. We call it the yard ornament because it's, it's sat in the yard for years. But he's got a car that, that I would love to see restored. It's a uh, 1975 Corvette. And I remember when, when I was young, riding around in that car with him, and that was back when it, it looked good. I mean, it's black, and uh, it's got that, that rumble that kind of makes you feel all good inside. I mean, you can just sit there at idle, and it's just sitting there, you know, and man, that gets me excited. Good sound and exhaust. I mean, you just feel special riding around in that car. It just, I don't know, it just... It, you know, it, it always made me feel good riding around in it when I was young. One of the reasons why I loved it is because if anybody knows what a 1975 or, you know, that kind of model Corvette looks like, they've got a very short back end and a long front end. And it was black, so I thought it kind of looked like the Batmobile. So that's why I used to call it the Batmobile. And I, I love that car. And, I, you know, I, like I said, I loved riding around in it. But... That car has gone through many years of neglect, and it's just it's, it's sat there, and it's in desperate need of restoration. It is. But when I look at that car, you know, I don't just, I don't just see it for what it is right now. I don't just see it with, with all the paint you know, flaked off of it and coming off. I don't, you know, see it when I look on the inside and, you know, the seats need repair and carpeting needs to be fixed. I don't see it like that. Because I can remember it when it looked good, when it rumbled, when I was riding around in it. I can remember that. And I can imagine that car's potential. I can see it. God looks at us the same way. We might have a lot of things that we need fixed. We might have some things that we need to be worked on. But God can look at you and He can see your true potential. He can see it. And every one of you, every one of us, has potential. I don't care what somebody's told you. I don't care how somebody has made you feel. You've got potential. And I'm not lying this morning. It's not going to be like the Geico commercial where Pinocchio's nose starts coming out. It's not like that. I'm being honest with you. Every one of you have potential to do something great for God. Every one of you have potential to have a better life, to move away from the struggles, to make it through the storm. You've got it. And I'm glad that I serve a God that doesn't just look at me for what I am right now, but He sees the potential of what can be. A lot of people, they may have a car like that, and they may say, well, you know, it's, it's too much work. It's too much time. You know, we're just going to you know, do away with it. We'll just let somebody haul it off. You know, they'll tow it to a junkyard, you know, sell it for scrap, something like that. And they'll go out and, you know, buy a new car. What if we served a God like that? What if we served a God that, 
didn't want to take the time with us, that didn't care enough about us to, to come down and, and fix the things that we need fixing. I'm glad I serve a God that, that can look past all that. I'm glad I serve a God that doesn't just move on to the next thing. He cares for you. He longs for you. He wants to see you restored. He wants that. I'm glad I serve a God that doesn't give up on me easily. Because I can go ahead and tell you, there's, there's been times, there's been things I've said, there's been things I've done that I'm sure that I've probably had some people that have given up on me, possibly. But God never will. He's constant. He's always there. You might be thinking this morning, you know, well, what, what do I need restored? What do I need to work on? What do I need taken out of my life? What, what's hindering me in my walk with God? And if you, don't, if you don't know, then pray about it. God will show you. He'll show you the things that need to be taken out. I've told you all this plenty of times. One of mine was music. I used to listen to some horrible music. It was awful. It wasn't, it wasn't good for me. Speaking in kind of parallel terms, I mean, it was like me, you know, going and eating at McDonald's as opposed to going and eating something healthy. I was filling myself with stuff that didn't need to be there. Just garbage. And God spoke to me and He told me, He says, you know what, this is part of the problem right here. You're getting in the car, you're driving down the road, you know, in the morning times, you're starting your morning off with trash. And you're just feeling that in your body. And most of y'all might, y'all might think I'm crazy, you know, by talking about music like that. But I'm telling you, it makes a difference. It does. And it made a difference in my life. Because I could tell that I had a little, I had some anger that was building up in me every morning. And then you get to your destination, whether it be work or, you know, if you've got something going on, you know, during the weekend or something like that. And, I mean, it can, it can take over. It can, especially at work. You go in already angry. That's not a good thing. They don't call it work for no reason because it, it ain't fun. It's not. And so I had to rid myself of that. And God restored some joy in my life. He restored some peace and comfort. And God can do the same thing for you. You know, I got to thinking when I was doing my study on this that when Jesus found out that, that Lazarus had died and He went to go be with the family. And he went to the tomb and, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he restored Lazarus' life back into him. I got to thinking, you know, Jesus, he didn't, he didn't go in and say, all right, y'all unwrap Lazarus. All right, go ahead and clean him up you know, on the outside, you know, and then I'm going to speak, you know, Lazarus come forth and he'll come out and he'll smell good, he'll look nice and he'll be all good. He didn't care about that. He just said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out. Man had been dead for four days and I'm sure that he stunk. I'm sure he didn't look very good. But you know what? He had life. He wasn't dead anymore. And I'm sure that that family there, those friends, it didn't bother them one bit. They ran up and they hugged on him and they celebrated with him. And I got to thinking, 
That's the way it should be in our church. When we see somebody from the outside, somebody that's lost, somebody that you know they might not dress like we do, they might not smell the best. All right, but when they come in these doors and they have a chance to experience new life and they receive that new life, I'm not going to let that stop me from celebrating with them. I'm not. Because there is a restoration that has taken place. And I can guarantee you there's angels up in heaven that are celebrating. So I might as well celebrate with them here on earth. I love the fact that we serve a restoration, a restoring God. I love it. He wants to restore so much in your life. He wants to give you that new life. If you're searching for new life this morning, He's got it for you. If you want peace and comfort to be in your home, He's got it. Me and Sister Missy talked about this last night. If you need joy restored back in your life, He can do it. I feel like that's something we all need. We all need joy restored back into our life. Because I, I love being joyful. I love being the person that's you know always smiling, always happy, always upbeat, try to be easygoing most of the time. I love that. That's what I want to be every day. But it's not going to be from me. It's going to be from God. That joy comes from God. And if you want joy to come back into your life, if you want joy to come back into your family, and if you want joy to come back into this church, then you've got to seek Him. And you've got to understand that it's going to be a process that it may not happen overnight, but it's going to happen. It is. You've got to fight for it. You've got to put in the work. I'm sure if I went right now and and started trying to restore my dad's car, yeah, it'd be a lot of work. And you know, the thing about it is that I couldn't do it because I don't know a lot about that stuff. So who, would I, who am I going to have to take it to? I'm going to have to take it to an expert. I'm going to have to take it to somebody that knows what they're doing. And I'm telling you this morning, God knows what He's doing. So if you've got something in your life that you need restored, take it to the expert. Take it to the Creator. We were created in His image. Alright? He knows what we need. He knows your, your heart's desires. He knows what you're struggling with in the pew right now. Just turn it over to Him. Let the restoration process begin. He can do it. If you'll stand with me this morning, I'll ask that if Sister Kayla and her family will come up to the platform. God doesn't want to just sit back and watch His people struggle. He doesn't. He wants to see you fully restored. He wants to see your true potential. He can see it. A lot of times I know that we, we struggle with seeing our own potential. But you don't have to struggle this morning. You don't have to do that. Because you've got a friend in Jesus who wants better for you. He wants to give you new life. He wants to breathe life into you like never before. Not just life, but life more abundantly. In Jeremiah 29.11, I know I use this verse a lot, but it just it speaks to me so much. It says, For I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. Now, if God didn't intend on restoring you, 
if God didn't intend on doing something in your life, He wouldn't have plans. But it says right here, I know the plans I have for you. He's got plans for your life. So don't think that you're not worthy. Don't think that you're not worth His time. Don't think you're not worth the effort. But the great thing right here is it says they are plans for good, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. You know what my hope is this morning? My hope is Jesus. And He will forever be my hope. If Jesus is your hope this morning, then you've already done something right. But now what you've got to do is you've got to let Him make a difference in your life. You've got to let Him start to do the work because He does have good plans for you. He doesn't want to see disaster take place in your life. He wants to see you fully restored and living your best life. And living the best life is living the blessed life. And He wants to bless you. Our brother's smiling at me right now because he, I guess he liked what, what I said there, but it's true. He wants to bless you. He wants to see our families blessed. He wants to see this church blessed. He wants you to be blessed personally. And you know what? It's, it's time that we got a little selfish. It is. It's time that you start caring about yourself. And you say, and you know what, God? I want to be blessed. And if somebody else doesn't want it, I want it. I'll take their blessing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Because that's when God knows, you know what? They're hungry. They're thirsty. But you know what? You can't have anything if you don't come to the table. You got to come to the table to be able to get blessed, to let God feed you, to let Him restore you and strengthen you and support you. I'm going to open up the altar this morning. If you've got something that you're struggling with this morning, if you've got something that you need God to restore, something that maybe that you had before, and maybe it's lost, maybe it's gone, and you've been searching for it, you know what? You can find it. You can. But you've got to seek. You've got to seek after it. So if you would this morning, if you'll come down this morning and just give it to God, just turn it over into His hands and let Him begin to do the work. I know He can, and I know He will. This altar's open up. Sister Kayla's going to sing a song for us this morning. And even if you don't have something that you need restored in your life, just, just come love on Him. If you feel like that that maybe, you know, you're okay right now, then come thank Him that everything's okay. Let's worship Him this morning. Oh.